Hi everyone. Today we have a quant class for you. We'll discuss overlapping sets, uh, specifically maximum and minimum type of questions in that. Now, usually we don't take quant classes because I think uh, you know we've covered it in a lot of detail in our videos and modules. But then, in case we feel that uh, learners are facing problems in certain specific question types, then we arrange our quant classes, right? So this is one of those topics. So um, we'll discuss quite a few questions of overlapping sets, how to find the maximum or the minimum. Before we start, I'll give you a quick framework of how we'll handle these kind of questions. Then we'll use that for all the various questions that we'll discuss today. Just let me share my screen. All right. So, how do you have the maximum minimum questions? Look, usually, Let's say you're given some data and you're given the data in terms of percentage, right? It could be numbers also, doesn't matter, but we'll just for ease take, let's say, percentage. For example, let's say we are given that, you know, um, since we're talking about percentages, let's say we have 100 people and we are given that 70% of them, they play football. And we are given that 60% of these people play cricket. So look, the way you're going to visualize is that you will say there are 100 people. This is our universal set, right? The, the a big rectangle. And say there are 100 people inside this. Yeah, visualize this. We are going to use Venn diagrams in all our questions. It just makes those maximum minimum questions really easy there. Yeah. Now think of, you know, you, you're saying 70% people play football. So think that there are 70 tickets yeah, you have these small tickets on which football is written and you have 70 of these because 70 percent people play football so you have 70 and you have 60 tickets on which cricket is written right now since 70 percent people play pay, uh, play football so out of these 100 people 70 people play football so these 70 tickets of football you have to distribute one each to 70 people over here, yeah? So let's say I give it, uh, give one ticket here, one ticket here, one ticket here, etc. And I cover 70 people. And that is how I get my circle of football, right? Fair enough, I have F here. And I have given it to 70 people, let's say here. Everyone has this ticket of F. Now I have to distribute these C tickets, these 60 of the C tickets, right? So what do we have in maximum minimum usually? So I would say that either I want to maximize the overlap or I want to minimize the overlap. So what that means is when I say I want to maximize the overlap, that means that I want to give, you know, these tickets to as many people as they are inside the F circle. That is, I want to maximize those people who have both the football ticket as well as the cricket uh, ticket. That is, I want to maximize those people who play both the sports, right? So how do I do that? How do I maximize? I try and give these tickets to as many people as I can inside the football circle. So let's say I'll give him also, her also, him also, whatever, right? So now since I have 60 cricket tickets, I and here I have 70 people, I can give 60 of them these cricket tickets, right? And that is how I'm maximizing the overlap, over, uh, the overlap. Now there are 60 people who play both the sports. What if this cricket, this was instead, for example, say 80. 80% yeah, 80 people play. Then what would I do? Now I have 70 people inside the F circle and I want to maximize the overlap. So I give these tickets to all the 70 people inside, but I also have to give to another 10 people outside. Right here would be another 10 people and to them also I'll have to give the tickets, cricket tickets, because there are total 80 tickets to be given away. Right. All right. What happens when I want to minimize the overlap? Let's say same situation. I have 100 people, you know, and I give 70 of them the football ticket. OK, it has to lie inside the rectangle. So I give 70 of them the football tickets and now I have the 60 cricket tickets. Now I want to minimize the overlap, which means that I want that, you know, the cricket tickets, the cricket people should not overlap with the football people as much as possible, right? 
Okay, so I have 70 people inside the F circle and I have 30 people outside, right? So when I'm handing out my cricket tickets, I should hand out first to these 30 people. So out of my 60, 30 are already gone to these people now. All of them have the cricket tickets, but I still have 30 tickets left. So what will I do? Now I don't have a choice. I have to give these cricket tickets to these 30 people that are inside the football circle, right? And that is how I'm minimizing the overlap. So this is the basic structure that we are going to follow for all our questions. Yeah, let's go on to our first question. I'll give you a couple of minutes to try it out. So in the College of Fine Arts, many subjects are offered, three of which are economics, history, and drawings. So then, all right, we have data in terms of percentages. All right, so let's assume that we have 100 people. Yeah, and these are all the 100 students. Now, 80% students take economics. So then, let's say we gave that economics ticket to 80 people, and here is our economics circle. All right, 53% take history, and 82% take drawing. What is the maximum percentage of students who could have taken all three subjects? So we have to maximize the overlap. Here we are going to maximize the overlap. What is the minimum? So we have to basically find both maximum as well as minimum. All right. So look, we have, let's find the maximum first. So economics, we have given the ticket to 80 people, right? Now, uh, when we're talking about maximum, I normally want to try want to start with the biggest uh, set that I have. So I have 82% take drawing. So I would want to start with that instead. Yeah. So let's not start with this. Let's start with drawing. So when I have maximum, I'll start with the biggest. And when I have minimum, I'll start with the smallest. And I'll talk about why this is so. Yeah. So I have three numbers, 80%, 53%, and 82%. So let's say I have 100 people over here. And here is my circle of 82. This is my drawing circle, right? I want to find the maximum overlap. Now, these 82 people have the drawing ticket. Now, 80% should take economics. How do I maximize the overlap? That is the same people have taken all the subjects. Of course, I'm going to then, out of these 82 people, I'm going to give the 80 tickets to the same people who are inside this circle. So then my circle of economics, the 80 circle, it lies inside my circle of drawing, which is the 82 circle, right? And my circle of history, which is 53. Now I have another 53 tickets. And since I want to maximize the overlap, I'll put them further inside the economic circle so that here is my history circle, which is 53. So that these 53 have all three tickets, right? They have taken all the three subjects. So this is how I have maximized the overlap. Right now, look, when I start with 80 first, then I can't put 82 inside it, right? So then it just creates a little bit of confusion. So then when we are dealing with maximum, we we take the biggest set first, right? We put that down. As I said, we're going to use Venn diagrams. We're going to put down the sets there in circles. So first of all, when we're talking about math, max, we'll put down the biggest set, yeah? So, all right. So then we got the max as 53, right? So then our answer is either this one or this one. All right, let's look at the min now. So I have, again, 100 people now. I want to minimize the overlap. I, I'll take the two smallest circles that I have. I have 53 circle and I have the 80 circle. So let me put them down in a way such that the overlap is as little as possible. Right. So I have, let's say I've put down here the 53 circle. Right. Uh, this is your history. And then economics is 80. I still have those 80 tickets. Look, when I have 53 to, I've given 53 to history, then there are 47 people outside who do not have any ticket as of now. So then out of 80 people, I'll give 47 tickets to the people who are outside, right? Out of 80 people, I've given 47 to these. Now I have how many tickets left? 33. So then I will have to give these 33 
tickets to still the people who already have the history ticket. That is, there will be an overlap of 33 for sure in both of them, right? So this is our economics. This overlap will happen. There is nothing we can do about it because we have only 100 people. So now look, there is an overlap of 33 in this particular area and the outside area, which is the 67, everything. Look at this, this entire thing, right? This entire thing, the 67 over here, right? They have one of the tickets. They, they don't have both. That is, they don't have, they haven't taken both the subjects. The overlap part is only this much. And since we want to minimize the overlap of all three, I want to protect this part as much as possible, right? I want to protect this one. I don't want to give them any more tickets as much as is possible. I can give the tickets to these 67 people. It doesn't matter because they don't have both of them as of now. Uh, they anyway will not have both both history as well as economics, right? Okay, so then I have to now give 82 of drawing tickets. So what do I do? I have, there are these 67 people who have only one as of now. So of my 82 tickets, I give 67 to the people who are outside, who are not lying in the overlap. But then still there are 15 left, which I must give to the people who are inside. Right? Because I have only 67 people outside, but I have 82 to give away. So then there will certainly be an overlap of 15 for sure. Right? So your minimum overlap in this case is 15. Right?